Now, let's look at this from a more strictly mathematical perspective. We know that for a quantity to be described as a wave, it must satisfy a wave equation. There must be a relationship between its second derivative in time and its second derivative in space. To derive this equation for the current sourced electromagnetic wave, we will begin by considering Faraday's and Ampere's laws. These two laws are obviously very similar. They both relate the curl of one sort of field, either electric or magnetic, to the time derivative of the other sort of field. The only significant difference between these two equations is the presence of the current term in Ampere's law, which is not mirrored in Faraday's law. The reason for this mismatch is that while we do have and must account for the presence of electric currents, we do not have any such thing as a literal magnetic current. We might suppose that if such a thing as magnetic current existed, it might result in a more symmetric set of laws, such as this, where we've added a negative J sub M term to Faraday's law for magnetic current. Now, it turns out that some configurations of electric current are easier to analyze if we treat them as though they were an equivalent magnetic current. In other words, we can sometimes use a geometrically simple magnetic current as a mathematically expedient stand-in for a more complicated electric current. For this reason, we're going to go ahead and keep this J sub M term, even though it is not physically literal. And for clarity of notation, we will also add the subscript E to the term for the literal electric current. So J sub E is the electric current density, and J sub M is the magnetic current density. As an example, and this is something we'll go into much more detail about later, if you want to solve for the fields for a particular current source, you have to integrate over the volume of the current density. So if the current is carried by a wire, you have to integrate along the length of the wire. The simplest wire configuration to integrate is a straight line. So if you have a current carried by a long straight wire, that will be the easiest scenario to solve. Of course, this becomes more complicated as the geometry containing the current becomes more complicated. So if you have the wire doing loops, the integral becomes considerably more complicated. However, as it turns out, a loop of electric current produces exactly the same field structure as you would expect from a linear magnetic current. So if you know the equivalence conversion, you can replace any electric current loops in your problem geometry with straight lines of magnetic current. This is why we're carrying the magnetic current term around in our equations, because even though magnetic currents don't literally exist, some configurations of electric current may be easier to solve as equivalent magnetic currents. We can use these two laws, together with Gauss's law and the solenoidal law, to derive current sourced wave equations for both the electric and magnetic fields. Let's start by finding the current sourced wave equation for the magnetic field. We'll start with this statement of Ampere's law and take the curl of both sides of the equation. This gives us del cross del cross h on the left hand side of the equation and del cross dd dt plus j sub e on the right hand side of the equation. Since the curl function is distributive, we can rewrite this as d dt del cross d plus del cross j sub e. We can then apply the constitutive relation for d on the right so that it becomes epsilon e, and we can apply the vector identity, the curl of a curl of a vector equals the gradient of the divergence minus its Laplacian, to show that the gradient of the divergence of the magnetic field minus the Laplacian of the magnetic field is equal to epsilon times the time derivative of the curl of the electric field plus the curl of the electric current density. Now on the right hand side we have the curl of e, which by Faraday's law equals negative db dt minus j sub m, so we can plug that in. And we also know that b, by the constitutive relation, is equal to mu h, so we can plug that in. Finally, from the solenoidal law, we know that the divergence of h is equal to zero, so we can drop that term. So this is our final statement of the current sourced wave equation for h, the magnetic field. The Laplacian of h is equal to mu epsilon times the double time derivative of h plus epsilon times the time derivative of the magnetic current density 
minus the curl of the electric current density. Note that if you choose to directly use the literal sources, J sub m becomes zero, and your expression simplifies to this. Alternatively, if you retain both forms of current, but make the assumption that all the sources are time harmonic, meaning sinusoidal in time, the ddt terms turn into j omegas, and the wave equation becomes this. The Laplacian of h is equal to negative mu epsilon omega squared h plus j epsilon omega j sub m minus del cross j sub e. By a similar process, we can obtain the current source wave equation for the electric field, starting with our modified form of Faraday's law. So here's the statement of Faraday's law, and like before, the first step is to take the curl of both sides of the equation. So on the left, we get del cross del cross E, and on the right, we have del cross negative dBdt minus J sub M. By distributing the curl, we can expand this to negative ddt del cross B minus del cross J sub M. Then we can substitute in that B equals mu H and apply the same vector identity we used before to rearrange the left-hand side of the equation. And we get that the gradient of the divergence of the electric field minus the Laplacian of the electric field equals negative mu times ddt del cross h minus del cross j sub m. Then by Ampere's law, we can plug in that del cross h equals ddt plus j sub e, and from the constitutive relation, we can convert d to epsilon e. And this is the equation we obtain. Finally, we apply Gauss's law for the case where rho, the static charge density, equals zero to obtain this current sourced wave equation for the electric field. Note again that if you only wish to directly consider the literal sources, the magnetic current drops to zero and you're left with this simplified wave equation. Or if you keep both possible current sources, but assume that they are time harmonic, the time derivatives become j omegas and the wave equation becomes del squared e equals negative mu epsilon omega squared e plus j mu omega j sub e plus del cross j sub m. So these are the two wave equations that describe radiation of electric and magnetic fields from a collection of electric and magnetic current sources. Note that these two equations are almost exactly symmetric. If you draw a parallel between E and H, between permeability and permittivity, and between the magnetic and electric currents, the only difference between these two formulas is the sign of the curl term at the end. So we can expect that the solutions for the radiated electric and magnetic fields will also be very similar.